Good morning. How y'all doing? Just looking up something. Mm. Good morning. How y'all doing this one? I see y'all coming in. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. God has no way to fellowship for me. Mm. Well, good morning. I'm sorry I had to read something this morning. Welcome. Welcome to Copy and Conversations with Akeisha. I've been listening to For Your Glory by Tasha Cobbs. I love that song. If you've never listened to that song, I'm going to admire. And we've been talking about life in the spirit. I promise you, when we finish this series, you're going to be able to connect the dots. I understand more of God this morning after um, prayer and after talking with him and after studying. Usually I'll have time to type stuff up, but actually everything that I was writing this morning, um, I didn't have time to, so y'all bear with me. I'm going to pray. We're still dealing with life in the spirit, but we're going to make a transition. Um, and we're going to talk about um, no confidence in your flesh and um, how how important confession is for your soul. And I'm just going to kind of take you through some of the notes and some of the things that I was reading this morning and the way the Holy Spirit helped me and how much I was repenting. <laughs> like how much I was repenting this morning. How much I was like, my God, I'm sorry. Holy Spirit, help me. Father, forgive me. Um, every time I am brought into new revelation or light, it just does something in me. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you. The flesh will the flesh will have you build a false confidence in yourself and not necessarily a confidence in your in the word and in the spirit. And we won't even realize we're doing it. And the reason we won't realize we're doing it is because we've been so used to taking confidence in the flesh for so long. Like it's not been unusual for us to take confidence in the flesh. And we don't even realize we're taking conflict, confidence in the flesh, but we are for sure taking confidence in the flesh. And probably the first thing that we need to do to get outside of ourselves so that we don't take confidence in the flesh is keep our, our hearts open to God, stay in a very repentant and humble place and confession, 
confession, when they say confession is good for the soul, confession is good for the soul. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about what that means. Uh, let's go on and pray and get in the word today. My God, Father, we thank you. Mm -hmm. We thank you for your word. I thank you for your people. I thank you for this time with you. Father God, we ask you to forgive us for taking any confidence in the flesh, for trusting our own evaluation of ourselves over your evaluation of us, over what the word says, Lord God. Father God, we just ask that you forgive us today, Lord God. Forgive us today, Lord God, for having more confidence in anything else besides you, trusting in anything else besides you, trusting in degrees and trusting in people and trusting in internet and Facebook and Anything more than we trust in you, anything that we've put before you, anything that we've made an idol, Father God, forgive us for trusting in anything more than you. Now, Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for just coming and visiting us right now. My gosh, it Father God, you said that you will pour your spirit out upon all flesh, and we receive that by faith today. We thank you, Father God, for just who you are. We thank you, Father God, for experiencing the you in the privacy of our own homes. We thank you, Father God, for just renewing our minds and giving us a steadfast spirit, Lord God, and allowing us to align ourselves with your perfect will for our lives, Father God. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you that no demon, no devil in hell shall come near our dwelling. We thank you, Father God, that our hearts of our understanding are open right now to the hope and call of who Christ Jesus in our lives, and that we are getting divine revelation, Father God, from this point on. We thank you, Father God, for slowing us down. Lord God, we thank you for quickening our spirits, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for just your word taking root and taking present in our life. We thank you, Father God, that your word is resurrecting those stony places and the places that have been filled with weeds. And we thank you, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that your word is working out the dry places in our heart so that we can be filled with your spirit, so that we can be wet with you, Lord God, taking no confidence in the flesh, my God. Taking no confidence in the flesh, Lord. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Christ Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill this room. Fill my life. Fill my day. Fill this devotional. Fill your people. My God, come in and sub with us. Visit us. Lead us. Guide us. Correct us. Prune us. Holy Spirit, be in us. Lord, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus so we could have the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you, Father, for how you see us, for your resurrecting power, Lord God, for taking us back, Father God, for awakening us, for living in us, for trusting us with your people, for giving us gifts, talents, Father God, to be used for your glory. We thank you for the power that comes from on high. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We bless you, Lord God. Keep us from evil, Lord God, so that we may do no harm, increase our capacity, enlarge the places of our tent. We thank you, Father God, that favor goes before us today, Lord God, that we have favor with you, that we have favor with man. We thank you for explosiveness in the spirit. We thank you for new opportunities for your glory, new opportunities through jobs, new opportunities through ministry, Lord God, new opportunities through the books we write, through entrepreneurship. We thank you for new opportunities for your glory. My God, we thank you. We operate in the mind of Christ. Father God, we thank you. We op Our will is the will of God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for strengthening us. We thank you, Lord God, for your power that only comes from on high. We thank you. We are filled with the Holy Ghost. My God, my God, somebody right now is being filled with the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord God. You are filling us with the Holy Ghost. And the evidence is we will speak in unknown tongues. We thank you for your resurrecting power. My God. Somebody right now is getting filled with the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My God, in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. My God, we thank you. My God, my God, we thank you. My God, my God, my God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My God, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. No confidence in the flesh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, just have your way, Lord, in this devotional. Have your way in our life. Have your way, have your way, have your way, have your way. Put your hands over your heart and activate your heart this morning. Lord God, we thank you that our hearts are activated mm, by the Spirit and according to your word, Lord God, that we take no confidence in the flesh. We take no confidence in the flesh. We take no confidence in the flesh. We trust you only, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. My God, my God, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you're just tuning in, welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Akeisha. I'm your girl, LMJ. If this is your first time, we welcome you. We thank you. Now, we're a little strange on this in this group, but God is moving. So we thank you that the spirit will build, bear witness to you to hold on and to tap right on in. Do me a favor. Go share the devotional. Go put it up. Put it in someone's hands. If you're on Instagram, click your little arrow. Send it into someone's inbox. Invite someone in to just be a part of what we're getting today. So we've been in this grave robber series, and I understand. I see God. I didn't get this all. I didn't understand this all as God was pulling this together. But I see God, and I understand God, and I understand him more. As I walked into church Sunday, and I was in discipleship class, and Pastor Ford was teaching on uh, living in the Holy Spirit. And I said, okay, God, I see you. And as I woke up this morning. And he was giving me what he was giving me to share with you this morning. I understand more how important it is not to take any confidence in the flesh. So be patient with me as I teach this. Uh, Y'all know I believe small bites equals a meal. And I know when the Lord led me to this, it was intentional. I want to stop first. I want to start first with First John 1 and 9. And then as I read First John 1 and 9, I'm just going to share with you in my notes some things that the Lord revealed to me that I think are that are essential to our development and our growth in Christ. Living life in the spirit is the only way that this you're not going to be overcome by the flesh. And that's why I'm saying put no confidence in the flesh. You've got to see this the way that God has been showing this to us. That's why confession is so important. And I understand what John is saying to us now in First John 1, 1 and 9. It says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we look at John's translation here, he was saying if we begin to, God, share a common view, right? If we will begin to share a common view, if we will begin to recount the things that we've done wrong, if we will begin to adopt, remember I told you yesterday, you're the righteousness of God, you're God's child. It's adjudicated. You don't have to go to court and pay a fine. My God, thank you for that yesterday, Jessica. You don't have to go to court and pay a fine for something. The fine has already been paid. You don't have to go to court and get justice for this thing anymore. It's already been done. You don't, you don't have to do it. You're not going to repay for a speeding ticket. You're not going to put anything in position and go pay for something. You're not going to be a double jeopardy. You're not going to go and pay for a crime that, that's already been paid for. The crime has already been paid for. We're done talking about the crime. We're done, we're done talking about the sin. But what we're learning to do now is master the flesh by the spirit so that we can come up out of these graves. Come on, Lord, so that we can come up out of these graves, so that we can come up out of these dead situations, so that we can be effective in the spirit, be an extensions of Christ here on this earth. That's what God is doing in us now. So it's established. 
If you didn't understand that you were God's child, I need you to accept that right now by the spirit and say, I am a child of God. He is my daddy. I am not orphaned. I am not abandoned. God has not forgotten about me. God will never leave me. God will never forsake me. God is with me. God is for me. God goes before me. God is in me. The spirit of God lives in me. I am not my mistakes. I am not my past. I am not what my mother said I am. I'm not what my father said I am. I'm not what people have said about me. I am God's child. I am right standing with God. He loves me when he sees me. He does not see my sin. He sees me. He sees the child he created for this time on this earth and he loves me intensely and he loves me immensely and it's not based on my behavior it's not based on the things that i do it's based on because he is god and i and he is my father and i am his son and he and i am his daughter and i am his child and with that comes every benefit of the kingdom my god and if you have not see that's why we confess we're not confessing to do a thing when i'm telling you confession is important we're confessing so you can reset your mind we're confessing so you can reset your spirit we're confessing so that your life your will your emotions your mindset will begin to align with what the word of god says about you because the enemy has been lying to you from day one to put you in a less than state so that you wouldn't walk in the spirit. He's been teaching you to have confidence in the flesh so that you won't walk in the spirit. He's been teaching you to do things so that you will not walk in the spirit, so that you won't be conscious of the spiritual realm and who God made you. And so you won't walk in authority. And so you won't walk in power. That's why he don't want to, you want you talking or dealing with your sin. That's why he don't want you to have, he, confession is what's going to give you God's view of us, even in our fallen state. Confession is what's going to give you God's view of us. Confession is, John, John is saying, I need you to stay in a repentance and a confessing state so that you understand God's view of you. God already knows your flesh. Romans 8 and 23 reminds us our bodies have not been redeemed yet. Come on, Holy Spirit. And if our bodies have not been redeemed yet, then we are still going to be manipulated. Come on by our flesh, right? And so confession is necessary, admitting to God, um, letting, dealing with God. God knows we are fallen creatures and we become corrupt in our thinking and corrupt in our desires and corrupt in the way that we handle things. And so in this confession is necessary. And for me, confession isn't always just about sin, but confessing that I don't have the capacity. I don't have the capacity for this without you. I can't teach without you, Holy Spirit. I can't walk in this ministry without you. I can't be the mother. See, can I tell you something? The difference between the mother that I am now and the difference between the mother that I was is because the mother I am now is in partnership with the Holy Spirit. I don't have the capacity. That's why when people will say, good job, mom. No, not good job, mom. Good job, Jesus. I cannot take confidence in the things that I'm doing now. I can't put the confidence on me. I can't say it's Lakeisha. Yep, I'm willing. Yep, I'm obedient. Yep, I'm studying. Yep, I'm praying. But I can't take confidence for the things that you're seeing manifest in my life. They're manifesting in my life because of the spirit. Because my confession also tells God I don't have the capacity. I don't have the capacity for this. And as soon as I get in a position in admitting to God that I don't have the capacity for something, you know what happens? The Holy Spirit moves right in. The Holy Spirit moves right in. And so in this confession, we're going to get God's views because our thinking and our desires, God, confession leads us to a place in recognizing, come on now, that while we're in the body, we're agreeing what God says are our problems in the flesh. 
My, my God, my God. We're agreeing. But the, he tells us our flesh is going to be prideful. He tells us our flesh is going to faint. He tells us these things. He tells us our flesh is going to rise up. He tells us it's difficult to tame the tongue. It does not mean that we get to make excuses to do those things, but he's telling us that's in the flesh. And he's, and he, and he's letting us and helping us understand. I need you to understand that I, that this is the way your body is going to respond because your redemptive bodies haven't gotten there yet. Your redemptive bodies haven't gotten there yet. So you're going to act corruptly. Um, you're going to rebel against God. I told you in Romans 8, your carnal self is in enmity. It's against God. Your carnal mind is against God at all times. It has absolutely no desire to do what's right. And so even in the confession, it's the acknowledgement that I don't have the capacity for this. I don't have the capacity for this. I can't do this on my own. Yeah, you know, you know how you say the saying, I'm stretched too thin. Lord, I'm stretched too thin. I get stretched too thin if I try to do this in my natural man. And so confession reminds us we're not as good as we think. <laughs> Confession reminds us we're not as good as we think. And if we spend the time really allowing the Holy Spirit to search our heart, really allowing the Holy Spirit to say to us, you know what? You're not as good as you think. Really allowing the Holy Spirit to work the words. Of, can I tell you what draws me to this word? Because I know my flesh will take over. I know my flesh will try to rule and lead. I'm drawn to this word because it's going to help me stay submitted to the spirit because what the spirit is bearing witness for, this word is backing it up in truth, right? The backing up in truth. Most of us, if somebody asks us if we were a good person, are you a good person? We're going to be like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm a good person. And we're going to start specifically telling them why we are a good person person. We exhibit these tendencies, but we forget that we're a good person because of life in the spirit and who Christ taught us and what Christ is doing. Yeah, I'm a good person in Christ Jesus. I am the way that I am because of the Father. I am the way that I am because of the Holy Spirit. This is why I am the way that I am. I'm not about to put no confidence I'm, I'm not about, this was my conviction. I'm not about to put no confidence in my degrees. I'm not about to put no confidence in my teaching abilities. I'm not about to put no confidence in anything that has to do with this flesh. I'm not, even if I'm not, I cannot afford to put confidence. That was my conviction. We have, we cannot put confidence. Our flesh is so deceitful. Our flesh is one of the most deceitful things. Our flesh will tell us we are good, especially if we compare ourselves to other people. Our flesh will tell us we are better. If we feel like we got a revelation of something that somebody else doesn't tell us, we'll act in such a manner. And our flesh will tell us we are better than the other person because we got revelation of this. We just got revelation. We're in a mindset. Our flesh is so deceitful, but we are not my God, we are not to judge ourselves by other people. We are to judge ourselves in God's standard. And if we are spending the time that we're supposed to spend in the word of God, then we won't be concerned about the world's standards. We'll only be concerned about God's standard for us. If we think our standard is by what anybody else is doing or how good someone else says or, or how good my uncle taught me he's something when I finish preaching or when I finish teaching or when I finish a devotional, I've, I'm learning to evaluate and ask the Holy Spirit, how did I do? Did I say everything you wanted me to say? Have I done everything that you wanted me to do? And so we have to be careful with this because we'll take confidence in the flesh, measuring ourselves measuring ourselves and putting ourselves in the position in which we ranked ourselves. My God. And we ain't got no business ranking ourselves. So we're going to start with first John 1 and 9. Lord God, I need to come in agreement and alignment with what, what you said. And you've already told me don't take any confidence in anything fleshly. And so I'm going to ask you this morning, what have you taken confidence in? I want to read this to you, and then we're going to put a pin in it, and we're going to pick this, pick this back up tomorrow. I want to read this to you today. So we're not supposed to have absolutely 
any confidence in the flesh. It's what leads us to selfishness. It's what leads us to right standing. And we've already been taught so many things by the world and even so many things by the, the, the world being in the church that have been wrong and that have been think, teaching us to have confidence in our flesh instead of confidence in Christ Jesus. Well, well, we won't stand in a place of confessing to confess our sins, to confess our limitations, to invite Christ in at the point that we think we're more than Christ, then we know better than Christ, then when we know better than God for ourselves, we're already on the wrong road. And that's even in hand. Can I tell you something? The reason we handle conflict wrong so many times is because we do it according to our flesh. Let me read this to you. This is Philippians 3, and we're going to start in the second verse, and I'm reading in the New Living Translation. It says, watch out for those dogs, those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be saved. For we who worship by the spirit of the gods are the, are the ones who truly are circumcised. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence. Say it, say it after me. We put no confidence. I need you to repeat after me. We put no confidence in human effort. Though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could, indeed, if others have reason. And he's saying here, I can have confidence in my own efforts. I can have confidence in all the degrees I have. I can have confidence in the things that I've done because I've seen a producing result. Come on, Holy Spirit. And that's the mistake we make when we see a producing result. We'll take confidence in our flesh. He said, I could have confidence in my own effort if anyone could have confidence in my own effort. Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. He said, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure blood citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish laws. I was so zealous that I harshly, but I was so zealous. He was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without a fault. I once thought these things were valuable. Come on, Paul, teach us. I once thought these things were valuable, but I now consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, my God, for his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all garbage so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law, rather I become righteousness through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith, a life by the spirit. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Then he goes into the high, pressing into the, pressing into God, taking things, moving forward. So putting no confidence in our own efforts, no confidence in the flesh, When we live according to the flesh, we do anything without depending on the spirit. And instead of putting our faith in Christ Jesus, who should be our supreme treasure, we'll begin to put our faith and our reliance in ourselves. You cannot put any confidence in the flesh. And so how we first deal with no putting confidence in the flesh is in First John, go back to First John 1, 1, 9 and begin to co- repent. First of all, Lord, let me repent for even putting confidence in my flesh. Let me repent for even putting confidence in my flesh. That's why I don't want you to think it's about doing. It's not about doing. It's not about, it's about being led by the spirit. It's not about doing. When we confess, we do confessions. We do the Bill Winston confession. It's not about doing. It's about activating things in the spirit realm because our flesh is against the spirit realm. So we take confession or we make public confessions so that our, because of the way our brain is wired, so our brain can begin to think more like the things of Christ and that our flesh can be responded to those things. That's why we 
confess the word of God. That's why we have our daily confessions. It's not so that we can say, oh, I confess the word of God. And like my confession is what's working. It's the spirit that's working. And it's the renewing of our mind through the confessions that's changing our view and allowing us to be led by the spirit. When your mind becomes renewed, and Paul tells us this, then you're more apt to live life by the spirit versus life by the flesh. That's why we do. Uh, but I don't want you to be confident. I confess every day. No, <laughs> no. It's not about you confessing every day. It's about you confessing every day because you can't, so that you don't put confidence in your flesh, so that your spirit can begin to take over this thing and that you can live a life that's more pleasing to Christ. Well, that's it. My God. That's it for today. I love y'all. That's it. That's it for today. I love y'all. Let's pray. Let's get out of here. Log on to the website, LakeishaMJohnson.com to stay connected. Stay connected. Um, we love y'all. I love y'all so much. Let's pray. Ladies, tonight, Bible study, we're going to, my special guest is my mother, and she's going to be talking on faith and finances. And she told me yesterday, she said, God gave me a word. I said, good. Y'all, you got, you get in here and let's talk about faith and finances because we don't want to put confidence in how we've been handling our finances. We don't want confidence. We don't want to handle our finances. We don't want to put confidence in how we don't want to have confidence anymore in our systems. We don't we're tired. I'm tired of repeating cycles. I'm tired of people calling me, telling me they're still struggling financially. Then that means somewhere we're putting confidence. And I'm not saying the devil ain't business, busy and all this other stuff. But we don't want to put confidence. Come on now. We don't want to put confidence in anything other than the spirit. And in the Lord, no confidence in ourselves. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. My God, I thank you for your people today. I thank you, Lord God, that this word is activated in their heart, that it is renewing their mind, Father God, and they are being transformed into Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, for all you are. We thank you, Father God, for our daily bread. We thank you, Father God, for protection. We thank you, Father God, for provision. We thank you, Adonai, that you are master of this universe. We Thank you, Lord God, for all things are possible with, when we believe in you. And we thank you for you, Lord God. We thank you for you, Lord God. We thank you that favor goes before us today, Lord God. We are anxious for nothing. Everything in prayer and supplication. We're making our requests known before you, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for new job opportunities, Lord God. I thank you for multiplication and increase, Lord God. I thank you today, Lord God, that the people of God are being positioned first when they're interviewing, Lord God, and that this is the season of their yes, Lord God. I thank you for doors open that no man can close. I thank you for restoration of family relationships, Lord God. I thank you families are being restored right now in Jesus' name. Why? Because the Spirit is working on our behalf. Show us your glory. Let your glory manifest in every area of our lives. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We have been redeemed. We thank you for Jesus Christ, my God. We thank you for all power in heaven and earth is in your hands. My God, you are a mighty God. My God, you are a just God. You are glorious. We thank you, Father God. We set a hedge of protection. We plead the blood of Jesus over our city, our state, our nation, our world, our homes, our children, our ministries, our jobs, our finances. We thank you that angels go before you. My God. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our present help. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. We bless your name, praise you, magnify you, and glorify you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Bless this day. Bless your people today. Let everything that they put their hands to prosper, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all. I love y'all so, so much. I love you more then you know, but more so God loves you. He loves you with everything in him. So do me a favor. Go be loved today. Love is an action word. The be action. Put it in action. Let someone experience the love of God. Find out what someone else needs today. Check on to someone today. Pray for someone today. Lift someone else up. Lift someone else up today. Don't be consumed and concerned with yourself. Don't rush the things of God. So now, don't be a Martha. <laughs> she had her purpose. 
but don't be a Martha. Be Mary. Get at his feet and stay there. Don't rush. Don't move too fast. I thank you, Lord God. Yeah, Teresa, that's good. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus over Facebook, over Instagram, over YouTube, over the, the, the Skyways, over uh, Twitter, over everywhere the word needs to go. We thank you, Lord. Your word is taking precedent. I will see you guys back here in the morning. Remember, we're in here. Go back tonight and read Philippians 3, 2, and 7. Ask the Lord, show me in me where I've been taking confidence in my flesh and journal. I told y'all writing is important. Journal what the Holy Spirit says to you. And if the Holy Spirit doesn't say it still, sit still and be quiet until the Holy Spirit says something to you.